If you ever have a form like this one right here, you might want to give users a little bit of feedback as they're filling it out. So you can use something like input valid to let them know when things are valid, but you might notice a small problem is they're all empty, but they're considered valid because well, they're valid if they're empty. You can fix that though by coming on to each one of those inputs and making them required because if they're required, then they're not considered valid if they're empty. So that solves that problem. But if you're hinting at things, you probably want to also let people know if it's invalid. So we can update this one and give this one an error state. Uh, the problem now is because they're required and they're empty, they're all showing up as invalid and we don't want that either. Luckily, the powers that be in the world of CSS realized this was an issue, so they added a new feature we can use, which is user valid and user invalid, which fixes this, because if I go in or out of a field, nothing happens, but as soon as I interact with that field and then leave the field, it then kicks in. This is really cool. Uh, so we can come here, I can just do four characters, and it will be invalid. And the reason that one is invalid is because over here on my input, I've actually put a minimum length here of 12 characters. So that's kind of cool. As soon as I get over 12 characters, it comes in as valid. You can even include patterns and other things here to help you out in the early stages before you get to your server side validation where users can't even submit things until they get them, you know, at least roughly in the right direction. Now there is a small problem with user valid and user invalid is that browser support is not perfect. So you might not want to put this into production just yet, unless it's a personal project or something, but there is another solution as long as you're using placeholders like I am here. And what that is, let's bring these back to our valid and invalid. And on both of them, I'm going to add in a not placeholder shown. And this has great browser support. And so we're saying not placeholder shown valid or not placeholder shown invalid. So that means if the placeholder is there. When we go into these, you can see that nothing is changing because as long as the placeholder is there, then we're, these aren't going to work. But as soon as my placeholder is gone, then we get the validation coming in and you're seeing it's red and then it eventually kicks over to green. Same with my email address. The same thing is going to work until I get to a valid email address. Uh, the problem with email addresses is this is considered valid. Once again, you can use a pattern to prevent that from being considered uh, uh, valid as well. So you need the dot followed by at least two characters using a little bit of regex with your pattern. Taking those off though, we can step this up a little bit because it's kind of weird if you're entering this and it's showing it as invalid because the user hasn't finished typing yet and that's not great either. So there's one little improvement that we can do here as well, which is saying that if it's an input that is in focus that is invalid, then we can do another outline color and say var color and we'll say warning maybe. So in this state, we can see that it's saying, oh, you know, we, we haven't got something valid just yet. And of course you could add the placeholder showing not in there if you don't want it to show up at the beginning. And as we're entering that, and once we hit 12 characters, it is now valid and the user knows they're okay. So when it's like this, we're not saying it's wrong. We're just saying like, keep on typing, make that password a little bit longer. And then we're saying, oh, you've, you've gotten long enough now uh, and met the other requirements that you might have other than a min length, whatever it is, the, this will be checking for all of those. And yeah, a pretty cool way to add a little bit of, you know, user feedback before you hit the submit button and then find out that you messed up your email and then finding out your password doesn't meet the arbitrary requirements that have been set on it.